What's up everyone, welcome to this special video where I review my $255,000 win in Vegas. It was obviously my biggest score and quite a special moment for me. I had some friends on the rail. It was a really, really cool experience and I thought I would go over the whole thing with you guys. Um, so I prepared some things. We're going to go first through my Insta stories for a little bit, then I switch over to All in Paths. A good friend of mine, and I mean most of you should know him by now, <laughs> that was following the action, was railing and did a nice Twitter thread and pretty much posted everything you needed to know in there. So first of all, you see the payouts at the bottom of the screen. Right now on day two, we are down to 13 players. Um, guaranteed 25,000. First place is 420k, just the price made for me. Um, and yeah, let's jump into the action. So first of all, this was a $3,500 buy-in at the Venetian Casino in Las Vegas. I went to Vegas to play the WCP and the other events at other casinos that had really good value. It was an unlimited re-entry event and it lasted four days. I played it from the first minute because uh, usually at the start a lot of regulars don't really want to play already. I don't mind it. There's lots of weak players around and yeah. So I jumped in there with 200 big blinds, grinded up, had a pretty good first day, had a good second day, um, but where I was short on the bubble, managed to eventually cash though and bag a nice stack for day three. On day three, we played down to 13 players and just before the end of the night, um, I had like a really good day, obviously, chipped up, chipped up, chipped up. And eventually I won that, made a nice hero call where I called down three streets with king nine what happened is um, cutoff limped of 20 blinds, small blind completed. The uh, cutoff was a Spanish regular, good regular. Small blind was Danny Tang, also a really good regular, won the 50k WCP later and also a natural 8 ambassador. And then I checked the big blind with the king-nine offsuit. Um, flop comes down, ace, king, 10. So I make middle pair. We see a quarter pot seabed from the limper of 18 bigs once again. Small blind calls, I call. There's a flush draw on the flop, and now the turn is the nine of spades, giving me two pair, but also there's a second flush draw. So we have two flush draws on the board on ace, king, ten, nine. I turn two pair, it goes check, small blind, I check the big blind, and now the cut of double barrels for 80%, small blind makes the fold. I decide to just continue, even though jamming seems also fine. Reverse the six of spades, uh, the backdoor flush draw gets there, seven, eight gets there, a lot of bluffs get there and or you know he has a lot of good hands as well he goes all in after i check it to him and i tank a bit and then make the call had a bit of a live read going on and figured if he bluffs all queen 10 queen checks at uh, queen 10 check 10 queen eights check eights uh, check sevens we're not doing too bad and he ended up having checked an offsuit and i went a big pot and yeah so into day three i go sitting uh, into day four i go in uh, third chips pretty close to chip lead though and there's 13 players left and we have 25,000 locked up, so let's jump into the action. Um, quickly. So, there are the payouts for the day two once again, but you see them below as well. Quick Insta story. All right, day two starts soon. We're actually already down to 13. There's this day two, that's the casino. And we start off the action really, really sick already. So, one of the first couple of hands, I just want to win a couple of small pots, right? I want to keep it easy, but nope. <laughs> I open the hijack with ace jack offsuit. The button flats, really good regular, and the big blind comes along of 20 blinds. Flop comes down, queen, jack, six, I want to say. So I flop middle pair, and yeah, queen, jack, five. Queen, jack, five is the flop with the flush draw. It's checked around. Now turn is an 8, so 10-9 makes it straight now. Big blind checks it again, I check it, and now the, cut, uh, the button flatter decides to go for an 80% bet. Big blind folds, I continue. River is the 6, so it's a queen check, 5, 8, 6 board. So even 9-7 gets, gets there now, I check it again, and now the button bets pot. And I'm in the tank. I mean, this is a pretty big spot. A lot of people bet a lot like a lot on the flop, don't really find these bluffs in, these, in the spot. I had, once again, a little bit of intuition going on. It's really tough to explain it, right? It's not something that you can grasp, but it was just a bit of an odd feeling about the hand. And I'm really deep in tank, don't like it, but that's just this little feeling I have. I think my hand is not the worst to call. I had the ace of diamonds blocking the flop flush draw, which I think he's more likely to bet, even though he disagreed later on. Um, I was in the tank, you know, just hoping for the king 10, the king 9, to check the flop. And yeah, make the call. He has ace 10 offsuit for ace high, and I win a big one there to start 
the day. I'm gonna continue here, we're down to 12 now, had an elimination, 30k locked up. We make the 10 at the final table very shortly after that, just chilling, and now we are on the final table of 10. Final table starts pretty well, I mace king, guy three red jams, queens, we flop the flush draw, turn the ace, and he busts. So then we have 100 big blinds, 37k locked up, biggest score of my career already, and we are down to nine players. And another elimination, 50k safe. Let's quickly listen to this one on break. Uh, outside on break right now, sick hand just before the end of it. Um, small blind, Elio Fox, super high roller, regular, um, Ray is 3x of 18 big blinds in the small blind. I get aces in the big blind and just call. Flop 873, two diamonds. He C bets, uh, he checks, I bet a third, he calls. Turn is another three, so 873, two flush draws out there. He checks again, I bet another third, he calls again. River's a check. So board reads 873, three check, flush drop. Both flush drop breaks. Um, I jam, he calls check eight for the counter fit to top two. And yeah, now I'm chip leading six million at BB 60K. And I'm guaranteed 61,000, let's get it. Must be nice, pretty nice hand there. I like my slow play and we got a very fortunate river as well. So at this point, I'm very, very focused. Obviously, I'm updating less about the hands that are happening, but we're just battling. And suddenly, we're down to 506k guaranteed. And this is where my buddy, Path, joins the rail. I already had a rail of Haymonia. And um, some viewers and Patrick Tardif was railing me. So yeah, now we're going to go through this thread. I've once went over this pretty tired. I haven't looked into it too much. But like, it's a very, very nice thread. Good memory. Let's have a look. So yeah, he's gonna post the update, there's five left, I'm guaranteed 100K. Thirteen chips at this point, other guys stacked up, I didn't really do too much. And we have some short stacks as well. Over here we have a pot to my left, there was, as you see down here, Dylan Lindy. Or Linde, really good high stakes, or mid, yeah, I mean high stakes live rack, on online rack as well, I'm a luck sack. Watch some of his training videos coming up, pretty funny. Um, I limp called the 4x for 50 bigs deep in a small blind. Flop is 10-6-5. I pocket 5 in the spot, so I flop top set. There's a flush route there. He checks it back. Turn is the king. I decide to check it again. I want to have some check raises on this king. It's a nice card for him to stab. It's a nice card for him to ha hit top pair. So um, I make the check raise. Cover my mouth with my hoodie. It's just something I've been doing on the final table against people that I thought could have a life read on me, just for a little bit of protection for a bit more. Comf just to be a bit more comfortable and really focus on stuff. I do get the fold, and now I'm chip leading 8 million big band 100k. What was really crazy about this event, and which kind of sucked, we played with a big band ante, which got reduced to half the amount once we were three handed. But there were some insane blind level jumps. So throughout the tournament, the blinds went up really slowly. It was a nice structure to play. And suddenly it went from like 50k to 100k to like. I don't know, like 75, 150, 100, 200, 150, 300 or something. Like it was insane. At some point it was really, really turbulent. We all were short. This is not quite at this point, but it's tough for me to memorize the exact time that was happening. But like at some point, everybody was really short. So we're also going to look through a picture. This is me. <laughs> um, yeah, nice style, by the way. This is kind of how I was rocking most of WCP. Really like the hoodie was comfortable and... Sweatpants, oh, sweatpants, obviously. Kind of me on the table, just chilling. Always had my water bottle with my own water with me. Got to be prepared if you wanna if you wanna grind long hours. Um. All right, what do we have here? Three and a half x the blind by blind. Check out flop and turn. River goes check check. I don't think this quite happened. This hand was a little bit different, tough for me to memorize it again, but we won a nice pot there. Stacking up a little bit. I opened the button and I faced a 20 big band jam. I was tanking here. Um, what happened is he opened a 3 bet like 9 7 suited with the chips and a big band jam 20 now. I um, had to fold with ICM, but I just wanted to double check, so I'm not missing out on any mistakes there. So these are stacks at this point, doing really well. Seed 1, sitting on 24 bigs. That's still on Lindy. Uh, that's the guy that just jammed on me. 45 bigs 
is this region a regular two to my right, to my right another regular 30 bigs, then there's me chip leading with 66 and then down the knee on to my left on 33 bigs. Not like a spot where you can do heaps, but obviously was looking for some nice spots. Stacks don't change too much, even though C3 gets a bit closer, the three of us are very close and we have two short stacks. Now we have tens versus ace king all in. This is the action was wild and he ends up winning it. So stacks are quite even at this point. If you look at this, 30, 22, 43, 46, and 15. Wow. At this point, I was just trying to find like nice spots. I didn't really want to push anything too hard. And I was just, you know, trying to pick up a couple of chips where I can. We don't want to play high variants there. I just want to wait for eliminations. Obviously, apply pressure. I'm the chip leader. But as you see, like stacks are so that I, my stack is also quite vulnerable. So I couldn't get too out of line. And the guys were also playing back a bunch. Somebody busted. And suddenly I have 141,000 knocked up. Insane stuff. Stacks super even at this point, right? And oh, this one is a big one. Where was this is one of the very interesting hands where I got a river where he didn't bluff. I would have snap called it. I just didn't believe him. What happened is he limped a small bl uh, blind. I checked the big blind. On the flop of 10 6 4 with two diamonds. He C bets 80%, or he bets 80%. I have checked turn offsuit, make the call. Turn was the eight of diamonds, so the flush gets there. He fires 80% again. At this point, I don't really think he has the flush. Most people go with a small sizing on a flop with that, right? I call again. Then the river is a four, which pairs the bottom card. A lot of people give up with their bluffs. And he checks it. I check it back. He has to check nine with a diamond for the draw, which I pretty much put him on. I don't think he had quite an open end on the turn. The turn was slightly different and it was displayed here, but something like this. Um, yeah. Yes! Go, baby! It's just hype moments. Really nice to see this again. I mean, I was very emotional, obviously, really enjoying life, and nice to have a ray like that. The Germans are coming. All right. So, this point, boom, look at that. Looking good on the 50 BB stack. Really doing fine. This is me actually just looking at the clock so I'm aware when the button is happening and stuff. But yeah. <laughs> what you see here is us complaining as the blinds go up to BB300K. Like it went way too fast. Suddenly this is like went from a nice structure to like these stacks as you see. Like the advantage I had up here, you see that? That happened to this very quickly, just like one, two steals and suddenly I only have less than 30 bigs. Really, really insane blind level change there, which kind of sucked, but, you know, we go for it. Yay, Over here, open jam. The stacks are all a bit shorter now. Um, you know, lost some, couple, like, like, some small pots at this point, and as you see, we're all really, really short now. I open, I, there's an open, I jam, I really want to see the fold here. I don't remember what I had, but I remember wanting a fold, like H-check or something. Um, so yeah, I was very happy to see the lay down there. And suddenly this thing happened. Madness, right? We all short. We have these letters guaranteed 140,000. Next letter, another 50K, another 60K, and then 160K heads up. I just want to see eliminations. What's happening is three way all in. Dylan Lindy goes all in. Uh, Israel and regular on the button, makes the ISO jam, and then the small blind in the tank, and eventually decides to call. So these guys are three way all in. I'm loving life, just want to see eliminations. The hands are as following. We have ace-king and ace-king and then king ten suited here. Diamond. This is still in Lindy's wife calling or asking for his cards to save him. All right. As you see, here comes jams. I folded ace-check as well, which was funny. I obviously just want to see... I was hoping for a flush draw for one of these guys to get busted as well. Um, but that didn't happen. Those guys chop it. Dylan Bus, absolute class guy. Once again, shout out to him. Um, super nice guy. We had a good chat, asked him some questions about live poker. But yeah, these guys stacked up. I'm the short stack now, three handed. Nothing to lose, everything to win. We we'll see what happens. Disgusting spot is happening though. What's happening here is I limped. The, um, so he's been pushing, putting on a lot of pressure. He stacked up nicely. He's the chip leader now. The two of us are shorter. I have. Limped before, he raised every time, I limp aces. He checks the big blind. Flop comes down, queen, five, six. I go for 
a big flop bet. He makes the call. Turn is the eight. I bet again. He co actually I min bet the flop. Sorry. He calls. I bet eighty percent on the eight. He calls. Reverse the king. I go for eighty percent again, and he jams. He moves all in, and I'm like super disgusted, right? I personally feel like this spot is very underbluffed. We don't see that many people going for it here. Um, I asked him later what he had. I laid down my aces because there's many two pairs out there. The straights get there on the eight turn, like seven nine, um, seven four. Didn't didn't like the spot. Like he needs to bluff like a six seven or an eight seven. Are people really doing it when I can have good hands here as well? Like bunch of two pairs, bunch of straights. I didn't think so. Didn't think it was worth it, especially three handed with ICM. To consider, so I make the fold, and he later told me he had six seven, but we will never fully know. <laughs> I think he had the six seven, so sick bluff by him, GG. All right. What happens now is this moment. They get it in blind versus blind, ace ten versus ace check. I'm praying super hard for the KO. Lock, would, would lock me up another 60k here. It's ace time versus ace check, blind versus blind. But there's a check on the flop, I think. And it's over. The guy gets the double up, and I'm the short stack. Alright. So I'm a very short stack, right? I only have seven big blinds or so after or folding the aces there on the river. The other guys have even stacks now that he doubled. And I face a seven big blind small blind jam, make up with fives. He jams seven blinds, I make the call. He has five for offsuit, I have pocket fives. I mean, what a time to be alive. So I win the pot in the end. Get a steal through. I have 10 big blinds again. This is kind of the rail at this point. There's people sitting on their, their luggage that kind of stop by. It's pretty sick. Like beh behind me where the picture is taken, like there's so many people standing there. Just insane scenes. Feels like a gangster movie in fucking Vegas. Just insane times. Next hand, I'm all in. 8 9 off for him. I have the ace king. Good spot to stack up nicely here. just praying super hard to hold here right massive pot to get back into this <laughs> drink that water all right so these are the stacks now seed one at 60 bigs seed two at 30 i'm at 17 um i'm just going through these updates really tough for me to remember anything and then one of just the craziest hand happens I'm the short stack here, really, really short again. Like, I lost chips from this moment on. I had like 10 bigs, probably less. These two guys have both like, both like 24. Button with the open, big blind three bets. So he has three bets, he slightly covers him. And he four bet jams, ace check suited. He makes the call with queens and suddenly I have the shot for, to get heads up with the short stack. I just pray super hard not to see the ace. I mean, we all know the ace is always fucking coming. But just sweating it so, so hard. Yep, and I just made another 60k there. Doing nothing. Doing nothing. It's super funny. I went over to hug the guy afterwards and said thank you to him for busting him when the other guy was gone, obviously. <laughs> it was a funny moment. We had a good time. All right. He had around 50 bigs now with that double. I had 10 bigs, so I was a huge underdog. We get in with queen 10 each. Actually, one picture I quickly want to show you guys at this point is... Um, let me quickly pull that up here. This is what we're playing for right now. We have this, whatever you want to call it, and the trophy. And obviously 420k. At this point, I didn't take a deal. I wasn't aware that you were allowed to take deals. I've just heard of it. Uh, that they're not facilitated during WCP. I just assumed there was in every casino for some reason. Um, so I, I didn't mention it. Um, I should have done it, obviously. It was two minutes before the break. I wanted to contact it in private. 
um, you know, if you want to do a deal and because I just didn't know if I could even say it on the table, right? Like it's tough to really think these things through right now. I would have just said, okay, I should mention something. Um, but yeah, I mean, at this point he still has like a big chip on me, so it's not the worst. <laughs> it does actually happen. Uh, I look at the rail, I, I say to Path, hey Path, I'm up more than you this year. I had a good time. All right, and here we have the final hand. Berlin goes for the 12th big bench jam with a7 off, and I call fives. But I actually hold, and we're just trolling. We're almost back to even. We're doing it. What happens here is Villain goes for a race blind versus blind. I make the call with queen seven. He c bets queen check eight. I call. All right, I didn't have... I had ten eight, I think. Wait. I had queen nine. Okay, I had queen nine, so I flopped the gut shot. He bets small. I make the call. Turns the queen, giving me a pair. He double barrels. I make the call again and reverse the eight pair in the bottom card. I check it. Uh, he checks it back. And I win a big one with queen nine. And at this point, we're actually slightly chip leading. Slight chip lead here and the heads up. At this point, I should do a chop. Once again, I wasn't aware. Happens. <laughs> he limp jams. I was bluffing. He wins one. Seven minutes until the break. And this is exactly what I mean. Like At that point, in seven minutes, I wanted to mention that we should do a deal um, in private. But, you know. So, this is the biggest pot in the end. He limps, I'm in the big blind with queen and offsuit and I check it. What happens is that he has like 27 blinds, I have 23 blinds, I think something around those lines. So he's slightly ahead in chips. I make the check race on a 9-8 deuce with my top pair against the third pot seabed. And he goes all in. I make the call with queen 9 obviously. So at this point I only need to fade a, a check, a 10 or a 6 to pretty much lock this up to have like 50 blinds against his 4 blinds. So, oh, what happens? Sorry. Let's quickly look at the turn together. Turn is amazing. The turn is a 9. So I make trips with my queen 9 means that the 10 is not an out for him anymore. So he's drawing to a check or a 7, 8 outs, 16%. A check or 6, obviously. And he hits the check on the river to win the event. Now the floor is coming over to exactly count our stacks because it was quite even. Not sure what they're shouting, I don't speak Australian. Just fist bumping random people on the rail as well. Gave him a hug, gave him a handshake, we chatted a little bit, it was like congrats, thanks for knocking out the other guy once again dude, it was a fun one. Like he was a very nice guy. I was I was trolling with him a little bit when I saw him around the rear. I was like, fuck you and making some jokes. Uh, we had a good you know, it was fun. Um obviously sucks to not win in the end. It's just something that like haunts me a little bit. I would have loved to win that trophy. Like obviously not 160k, sure, why not? But just like to win a live event is just so, so such a rare thing to happen and uh, would have been a really, really cool moment. But obviously finishing the second and getting that huge score is absolutely insane. Um, like for me personally doing the fine table it was a lot of fun in the beginning and even throughout it but right now like it's still really tough for me to go over the fine table again like I remember the hands but it was just like a dream you're so in the zone and so focused and then you're still making chokes at the time right but like still it's just you're on this six six level I didn't eat very much that day I was just really really focused just sitting there trying to take everything in picking up everything that I can so when the tournament ended, like my head was just buzzing, it was ringing, it was four crazy days, I just won 250k, I haven't eaten anything, I didn't even want to party or anything, I just grabbed some food, I got messages, my brother was raiding from home in Germany in the morning, I got messages from people I went to high school with, like, I've been doing this for such a, not, not I mean, I've been doing this for three and a half years, and I would say I've been quite successful with what I'm doing, right, I started with 100 bucks, now I won 255k. But even like before that score, I think I've been doing quite well. Um, but it's really tough for 
normal people to comprehend what I'm doing because it's just this Twitch space, you win that money and then, you know, you get a sponsorship deal, which is like a huge thing for me personally. But it's very tough for, for people from the normal world to realize that. But a win like that in Vegas, when you play for that much money, is something that the average person is also able to understand. So to get like a bunch of positive feedback from people that, you know, I've known for years, it's just insane and it was a great experience. And like, legit, like my brother railing in the WhatsApp group that I have with my parents was just an amazing feeling and legit one of the best things about this score. Um, so yeah, just a very, very cool experience there in the end. I hope you kind of enjoyed this little sum up. As a very emotional moment for me, I, I didn't sleep till 4 a.m. I didn't party or anything. I was really not in the mood. I just needed like a bit of peace and time to recover. The next day I was just chilling at the pool, smoked some weed, had some beers with the boys. And then the day after that I went back into the grind because I really enjoyed it in Vegas. And that's kind of it. I don't really have the crazy cocaine hookers strip club story. Um, but I have a very, very good experience, and yeah, I don't know, just <laughs> uh, a crazy, crazy trip. Uh, one more picture, actually, at the end, as a teaser for everybody that lasted till now. Uh, we took some of the money in cash. This is, I took 75k on the first day, and then another 180k the day after, so these are pricks of 50k, and like another 30k, 35k over here. Uh, I mean, just look at this, this is fucking insane, this is like hangover shit, my first trip to Vegas to be that fortunate to get that good run. Um, I mean, for the guys to follow my Twitch stream, I've been running bad online for like two months or so before I went to Vegas. I've still felt really good. Like life was doing well. I've been healthier than ever before. But it was obviously just pretty annoying. But I was ready to just play in Vegas. And if I, I had ready to just, just lose a lot of money, I went there with the mindset, hey, I lose 40K on this trip pretty often or like 20K, 10K. And that's all fine, you know. To come out with that much profit is just insane. And really really nice you know just to relax a little bit but yeah now it's back time to go back to the online grind that's what i'm doing i want to keep on improving obviously you still take time off spend time with friends and family as usual to just not fully go into poker and only have that for you going uh, going for you but um i'll just continue to grind online try to move up the stakes play some more live events and hopefully i don't know things continue going that well so thank you very much for watching a little bit of a different video but hope you enjoyed it nonetheless um, once again, just an insane experience. Nice to have that video. Interested to see what you guys say about it. Um, I see you in the next video with a normal poker highlight. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good one. Peace out.